first heard about this dog on Christmas Eve. It was about 3 p.m. Happy Doggerland was as full as full could be. There was absolutely no room for the dog whatsoever. But when you see a picture like that, you have to act. I know it's very painful, isn't it? We're gonna get you help now in a second. We just have to get a few things. Little Eve was initially outside and around a 7-Eleven, but locals had really kindly asked the 7-Eleven if she could hide down the back of it. So they'd found her a bit of shelter inside the shop, which was crucial really in her survival. Oh dear. <coughs> initially, we'd been told that an accident had happened. Oil and hot water had fallen on Eve. Now, I've been saving dogs here in Thailand for a while and I was immediately very skeptical. And sure enough, once we got down there and found Eve, spoke to a couple of locals, somebody who worked in the shop, and it was no accident. Somebody had thrown oil and water over Eve to get rid of her. You're shaking a lot, man. Well, we're gonna get you fixed quick. And by getting rid of her, I mean getting her away from their area. That was their way of getting her away from their food cart. She'd been targeted. Basically, the people in the area did not want her anymore, and their way of getting rid of her was just to throw oil and hot water over her, which had absolutely scalded her entire leg and underneath her belly. It was a really, really horrible situation. Did you see your tail wagon? Did you see your tail wagon? That's very good for a girl who's got a burn, isn't it? Oh, you sit down on your good side. That's a good girl. You're safe now. Once we brought Eve back to the land, she was in a really, really bad state. I mean, she wouldn't even make eye contact. She was so bad. She was shaking nonstop, like you could see her really, really shaking. She was just in a massive amount of pain. Her entire leg had caked over with one huge scab, which is really dangerous because underneath it is where the bacteria could grow and, and sepsis and things like that. And she could end up losing her leg or even dying. She wouldn't eat, she wouldn't drink. She wouldn't even go to the toilet for the first 48 hours, so she was in a really, really, really bad way when she first arrived. It's gonna be a great Christmas day for you, madam. A great, you'll be smiling and running around in no time. Can promise you that. We're very lucky on the first evening that the vet was still open. We just got to the vet on Christmas Eve in time, and the vet told us that, look, the most important thing was to get her injected with antibiotics. We were able to do some very basic sprays and cleaning of the wound, obviously get her some really, really good painkillers. And that was just to settle her down for the first day or two. Come on, we'll take a few big brave steps. Come on, Cindy, we'll show her the way. Mm -hmm. Come on. Now myself and Eve are sitting watching the world go past at the window here. She's healing up nicely, but what would help us massively is if you could hit the subscribe button. It really does help us spread the message about dogs and we would absolutely love a subscribe. Thank you very much. Mwah, beautiful little girl. What really worried me the most was Sybil, who was with me and who's a human doctor, explained that she'd lost a dog in similar situations and with humans it's really dangerous and Eve could literally die from her wound if it kept going as it was and it wasn't treated. Oh it's bad isn't it when you see it up close? It's bad. So the treatment plan was basically the vets, three or four different visits, were able to slowly start opening up the wound and let air get into it. And obviously the antibiotics and everything else kicked in and they were able to start cutting away the dead skin. Then Eve actually herself, dogs are able to clean their own wounds in a way that humans aren't. So it was actually good to leave it open. And it was very, very raw and very, very painful at the start, but it slowly started to get better and better. Lots of cleaning. She really, really, really did need the help from the vets because without that, she'd have been struggling on her own massively and she probably wouldn't have survived. Beautiful. That's a lovely sidestep you've got going on. A lovely sidestep. Oh, you're doing a good cleanup job yourself, aren't you? The attack on Eve is gonna affect her big time because the fur won't grow back in the same spot. So it's gonna leave a visible scar, but I was more worried about the sort of emotional scars. And luckily she seems to be okay on that front. It's great to see her walking around and following us and still trusting humans, which is remarkable after what she's been through. I think if anything, she's too nice. And I say that in a half joking way. I think that's why she probably got targeted. She was hanging around the wrong place, maybe trying to get attention. And even though it's inexplicable, 
that's what happened. Somebody wanted to get rid of her and threw hot water and oil over her, which is, which is just disgusting. But it's ironic that her being so nice is probably what got her into trouble. There she comes with her lovely sideways walk. Oh, it must be so painful. You're doing well. Oh, you're moving fast now. You're moving fast. Started seeing improvements in Eve after about three or four days. I mean, she was still in a massive amount of pain. She was still struggling. She was doing this sort of crab sideways walk, but that was telling me that she really wanted to make a go of it. She was like, I'm in pain, but I can still move. And I, I want to come on these walks with you. I want to meet the other dog. So she had plenty of fight in her and she amazingly loves human company. She instantly wanted to follow me around everywhere I went or Jules who, who works as well on the dogs. She was literally following us everywhere. There she is at sunrise, tail wagon. I've never seen the tail moving that fast, Eve. Look at who's friends now. Big Shaq and little Eve. There she comes. She's flying along now with her friend Brittany. After two weeks, there's a massive difference in Eve. Yes, it's still a sore burn and I always think of like a small burn that any of us get in a kitchen or from something hot and it's so painful. Eve has her whole leg looking like that. Can you see it? Oh, it's very bad, isn't it? But you're a sweet girl, aren't you? But two weeks later, Eve is literally coming alive. You can see it in her eyes, you can see it in her tail. She comes on every walk. She wants to go with Brittany. She wants to go with Cindy, her best friend. She is starting to love her food. She's just full of life. She just wants to be involved in everything, even though she's still visibly in pain. You can see the pain sometimes on her face, but she, she doesn't want to miss a thing. She's a wonderful dog, and we're only two weeks into her recovery. It's gonna take another, you know, couple of months, I think, to get her fully recovered, but she's well on her way. The future plan for Eve, I always am very reticent to bring dogs in because there's so many that we treat them on the streets, if at all possible. And we do rehome dogs, but it has to be a very special uh, reason to bring them in full time and not put them back on the streets because there's so many people who need that place. Eve is one of those who could never go back on the streets purely because of what she's been through. So ironically, it's taken something this bad to make her get a forever home, which is what's gonna happen next. She's gonna get so many applications. There's so many people who are already asking about her and who are interested in her. And I'm gonna put her up for adoption, maybe in about two weeks time when she gets fully better. So it's gonna be a very, very happy ending for Eve after a horrific start. And it shows that love will always win out over hate in this world. It's getting smaller by the day, that room. It's gonna take a while, but you're looking miraculous. Miraculous, little Eve. Absolutely miraculous.